Good morning, everybody. And we are back with the Bishop. Time for another segment of Renewing the Mind and the Body for Healthy Living. And while this notification is going out, let's hear this tune called He Did It Again by yours truly. Good morning, Jay. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I feel a good praise. <laughs> good morning, Gracia. Good to see you today. All right, all right, all right, all right. I want to say good morning to everybody that is watching. If this is your first time watching one of these broadcasts, please know that they are to encourage you, to empower you, to educate you, to motivate you, to inspire you, to uplift you, to move toward your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created, using the gifts that are within you. I am so thankful and grateful for all of you that are here. Thank you for those of you that are part of our family over here, Lamont Walker Ministries family. You like and follow this page. Uh, I am so grateful for that. Uh, you all know we're over here we love to learn, laugh, and love. And I want to say thank you for every comment, for every share, for every like, for every red and blue dot, every thumbs up, every heart. I really appreciate that. And if you are not a part of our family, what are you waiting on? Hit that like button, hit that follow button, and you will become a part of our family again over here where we love to learn, laugh, and love. And I love you, love you, love you, love you a long time. I also want to say thank you for those of you who continually sow into this ministry by hitting that share button. Take a second and hit that share button. It should be down at the bottom of your screen somewhere. Uh, hit that share button. Share this broadcast with your family members and your friends. My sister, my big little sister, Aisha, is on here. Aisha Keller. Good morning, my sister. I love you. And over here. Uh, share this broadcast with your family family members and your friends. We've been dealing with trauma and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And so uh, that's an opportunity for you to sow into this ministry. And I also want to say thank you for those who share via the Cash app. That really does help to expand this ministry and to bring more ministry to you that will be helpful because that's what this is all about. We're not just doing stuff over here just to be doing it. We don't just go live just to go live because we have the ability to do that. We're not lollygagging and gallivanting over here. We're really trying to help 
help those who watch these broadcasts. All right, my brother, Mo Steph, what's up, man? It's good to see you. Hey, can't wait to link up with you. I'm linking, I'm linking up with uh, my brother Mo Steph here uh, in just a little bit, and we we always bring a little something uh, tailored to the gentlemen. <laughs> So we've got that coming, but um, anyway, I want to send out some birthday shout outs because listen, y'all, we've been dealing with trauma over here, deal with your stuff. And when I tell you that this series has been a tremendous blessing to all of us, that's exactly what I mean. And this thing is so deep, you know, there are several parts to this and this is today's going to be the third part of the series and we're going to continue until we reach the, the conclusion of the matter. All right. But I want to send some birthday shout outs before I get off into all of that, because y'all know over here on Fridays, Friday is our fresh fire Friday praise break. And I feel like shouting already. All right. So let me send out these birthday shout outs. So I want to send a birthday shout out to my cousin, Mr. Jamal Walker, to my friend and sister who's wonderful colleague, um, Charlisha Green, to another great sister of mine, Laura, just wonderful people celebrating today, Miss Patrice Blanks. I want to send a birthday shout out to Pamela Campbell, to Pastor Jeremy Risner, to Kanitra Woods, to Mr. Arch Brooks, to Betty Johnson, to Rosa Lovell Grant Smith, to Angela Williams, to Nathan Lamont Taylor, to Mr. Kevin Kelly, an awesome uh, producer, mixer, drummer extraordinaire to another wonderful friend of mine mr curtis white and if today is your birthday i pray that your day is filled with many blessings and gifts and love from woo, from all around and that you enjoy as many of the sweet things as you desire just don't make yourself sick all right it's your day go out celebrate it live it up why because you deserve and it all right so y'all over here we've been dealing with we've been talking about trauma deal with your stuff all right uh, you know, that's right. Come on, speak it, Aisha. Come on, Ish. We are definitely uh, praying about that. There's been some, a uh, couple of communications that have come my way about having an, my own radio show on podcast. So uh, I believe that that may be in the works, but just continually pray for that, speak it into existence because I believe that what God has given to me uh, needs to go out abroad, you know, that God is going to expand the territory. The prayer of Jabez, enlarge my territory. Uh, so that, And it's really not even about me, but so that the people can hear what God is speaking to his people all around, all around. All right, so we've been dealing with trauma. So everybody in the comment section put, deal with your stuff. And really with yo, Y-O, deal with your stuff. Trauma, deal with your stuff. And as I said, uh, these scriptures that I'm going to declare and decree, I always put them out here as our base. I put them as our base as we go deeper into this discussion, because again, I don't want us to think that um, we can just haphazardly do it, or that it's just something that, you know, oh, we can do it at some point, and I'll get to it a little bit later on. No, this thing is very vital. It's very important, and we want to make sure that you become totally healed, free, and delivered, and whole, because that's what Jesus desires to do for all of us, is make us whole. So put in the comment section, deal with your stuff. And I think I, Alicia said the other day, she said, deal with my stuff. I got to deal with my stuff. <laughs> but you, you, you have to deal with your stuff. So uh, our base is Ephesians 4, 23, which says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. But let me put these other texts out here because this is going to help us to understand and get a little bit of a deeper connection to what we're talking about dealing with your stuff. All right. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Is there anybody in here that trusts the Lord today? All right. Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed. Woo. I feel like shouting y'all. Hallelujah. And woo. Okay. I'm trying to get through it today. Y'all again, it's so Something about fr Fridays that brings fresh fire over here on this page. And so, you know, I try not to get too caught up so that way we can all go together. But Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is there anybody on here that's been transformed? Thank you, Lord. Philippians 2 and 5. I see you, Jay. Good morning. Let this mind be in you 
which was also in Christ Jesus. Last one that I'm going to use as my best text to help me be solidified in what I'm talking about is Philippians 4, 7 and 8. It says, and the peace of God. Lord, is this good to anybody else or is it just me? <laughs> this is good to me, y'all. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. All right, so we've been dealing with trauma, dealing with your stuff. And the fact of the matter is all of us at some point or another have experienced trauma or possibly will experience trauma. And I haven't gotten into some of the specific events, but I may be able to get into some of those today so that we can talk about it and be able to make a connection about what I'm saying and then be able to deal with that and heal and become whole and release it out of the body. And we've been studying and looking at life care wellness and life care wellness was telling us that oftentimes trauma gets trapped in the body. That trauma gets trapped in the body. And I've been talking about what is trauma. Trauma is a disorder of the psyche or of your behavior as a result of severe mental stress or severe emotional stress or severe physical injury. And what is stress? Stress is simply pressure. That is built up. Stress is a force that comes to press you down. It comes to pull against you. It comes to push against you. Stress is pressure that twists you. All right. That's what stress is. And when you experience that in a harsh way, that's what severe means. You experience trauma. OK. And so what ends up happening is good morning, Amy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you. What happens is we found out is that the brain, it temporarily shuts down like God has created and wired our brains to shut down temporarily when we experience this type of trauma, when we experience this type of pressure. And so what ends up happening, watch this, though the brain temporarily stops, the body is still going. And we find out that the part of our brain that helps us to have complete memories is shut down when we experience trauma. So what ends up happening is the experience or the trauma gets broken up into fragments. It gets broken up into fragments. And so instead of it being replayed as a complete memory, we have fragments here and there in our brain that the body has not processed. And what happens is our bodies have a response, a natural response of fighting or flighting or freezing or tensing up. And so when the body doesn't do that, what ends up happening is the response gets trapped in our nervous system. So therefore, our nervous system gets off and you find people who are who are who are jittery and who are shaky and, and all of these different kinds of things. And so what we want to continue on with today is talking about, listen, you probably got trauma trapped in your body right now and you don't even realize it. You may have trauma trapped in your body. It's trapped in there because your body did not respond the way that God has intended for our body to respond to trauma, which is a force that's outside of us that we didn't expect to occur. So watch this again. It says instead of being and we're going to pick up and we're going on into part three instead of being stored as a complete memory played in our heads like a movie reel. Traumatic experiences are thought to be stored as fragments of pictures of body sensations. Again, these fragments are unprocessed and thus don't fit in the system as they should. And because they don't fit, these fragments can surface unexpectedly as nightmares, as flashbacks, as general angst and unease. OK, so like that, that's what I was just saying. When you got fragments of the traumatic experience, it, it can it can pop up at any at any given moment. And so this is why it is important that whenever you experience trauma, 
that you deal with it, that you process it. That's what I'm saying. So that, watch this, instead of being a fragment, it can become a complete memory that you are able to deal with, you can recognize, you can pinpoint, and you can learn from it. And it can actually be put in the right place in the brain. Hear me what I'm saying. So it can be stored as a complete memory instead of a fragment that causes you nightmares. And that causes you flashbacks, that causes you angst and unease, anxiety, okay? When trauma is trapped in your body, it says your body feels it and your brain tries to make sense of it. Let me say that again. When trauma is trapped, your body feels it. Hear me, your body feels it, but your brain is trying to make sense of it. But it doesn't recognize the difference. Watch. Thank you, Jesus. But it does not recognize the difference between physical or emotional danger. Your body doesn't. Your body does not recognize the difference. Your brain does, but your body does not recognize the difference between physical danger or emotional danger. And it says, watch this. That's why your heart may physically hurt during heartbreak. Does anybody on here hear me what I'm saying right now? As a result of trauma. And see what it says that trauma, you got to be, you have to deal with trauma because trauma can cause you mental and physical health issues down the road if you don't deal with it. That's what this is just saying. That's what this is saying. Your body don't recognize the difference between emotional and physical danger and your brain is trying to make sense. So the two are not on the same accord. They're in two different places doing their own thing. And so when you experience it, that's why I said that your heart may physically hurt during heartbreak. Has anybody had a, a an experience where your heart was broken and you could physically feel that? I have. I have. You know, you, you see sometimes people, they'll grab their chest because they, because of that. That's pressure. That's stress. That's trauma in the body. That's what that is. Trauma in the body. Okay. So what it says is that the body is the key to the mind. Thank you, Lord. You first, and this is what this is saying. This is from Life Care Wellness. Life care wellness says you first have to calm the body's response to trauma because, see, when people are we just found uh, found out about Tiger Woods, who was in that horrible car crash, his body nine times out of ten was in shock and his legs was they said his legs was to a certain extent was pent and all messed up and stuff like that. Listen, when you when you experience that type of because it says trauma is a shock to the system. So when you experience that type of trauma, that type of shock, your physical body goes into shock. Again, that's why you can't make sense of everything because your body feels something and your brain is trying to process something different. OK, and so what ends up happening is life care wellness is starting to lead us down the path of dealing with our trauma. First, is that you got to get your body. Watch this. You got to get your physical body. Hear me. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Woo. You've got to get your physical body into a state of peace and relaxation is what this is saying. You got to be able to calm your body down. Lord have mercy. Somebody put calm down. <laughs> calm down. You got to calm the body's response to trauma. Watch this. Shifting it from danger or alert to relaxed and controlled. Calm down. You got to calm your body down. You got to calm your body down when you watch this, especially for those who may be in a physically abusive relationship. You got to get out of that environment and get out of that atmosphere so you can calm your body down. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons why God allows our body to sleep or rest. So that our physical body can calm down because our bodies cannot store all of that pressure. Does anybody on here hear me what I'm saying? Our physical body can't. Uh, thank you, Lord. It cannot handle all of that pressure. So God allows our physical bodies, listen, to rest, to go into rest mode, to go into a relaxed mode. And what happens a lot of times for some of you is that your mind, 
your mind, even though your body may be in a relaxed mode, but your mind isn't because you have unresolved trauma. And so what ends up happening is when you go into that relaxed mode because you still got unprocessed fragments, here comes the nightmare. Ooh, okay, I'm going to let that be a Selah moment. I'm let that be a Selah moment. Let that be a Selah moment. I say, here comes the nightmare because you have unprocessed trauma. You've got fragments. So you're scared to go to sleep. You anxious and nervous about going to sleep because you have unprocessed, you have unprocessed fragments. And you know that when you lay down, you know that when you go to sleep, the nightmare and the flashback is going to occur. So that causes your body to go back into that state of danger and alert. And that's not going to help you to get to the resolve and get that out of your physical body. Lord have mercy. I love you today. 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 It says that then when you are in a state of relaxation and calm and peace, only then can you begin to recognize and process, see, the mind, the mental and emotional aspects of the trauma. That's one of the reasons why I use those scriptures and those texts as my base. Good morning, Overseer Marcia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Because that trauma that you experience is now embedded in your mind, in your emotions, and in your body. And you now got to get that out of you. Because let me tell you something. What goes in, y'all? What? Oh, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. What goes in, it has to come out. What goes in, it has to come out. Let me say it again. What goes in, what you take into you, it has to come out. It will come out at some point. And watch this. If you don't deal with your stuff, you're going to be in a situation where your unresolved and unpacked trauma is going to come out and it's going to have a negative impact. In a place that was intended and designed for positivity. But because you ain't dealt with your stuff, you could be the reason why the relationship goes bad. You could be, and your unresolved trauma could be the reason why some doors don't open for you. Does anybody on here hear me what I'm saying? You and your unresolved trauma could be the reason why some of your kids end up in the rut that they end up in. Because of unresolved trauma. You and your unresolved trauma can be the reason why you are in the shape and condition that you're in. Because you didn't allow your body to get into a state of relaxation and calm so that you can process and deal with the mental and emotional intake of the trauma. Does anybody only hear me what I'm saying? Does anybody only hear me what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. Okay, so let me go into this piece here. I asked the question as I was going through this journey, and I'm about to go. I'm finna get off of here. I hope I've said something to help somebody. I hope I've said something to help somebody. How is trauma induced? It says trauma can be caused by an overwhelmingly negative event that causes a lasting impact on the victim's mental and emotional stability. Do y'all know some people who not stable in their mind? Like it's like some about them. You when you see them and when you hear them, you can you can tell and discern that they mind ain't right. It seems like they just an emotional time bomb ticking and just waiting to explode. And you see people like their emotions are unstable. Like one minute they happy, the next minute they frustrated. One minute they seem like they at peace, and then the next minute it feel like they angry. Like they're just emotionally unstable. Sometimes, like I think in the psychological world, they call them uh, having a bi a bipolar disorder. Again, it's a disorder of the psyche. It's a disorder of the behavior. And so you got to ask this question because, see, most oftentimes we only see the physical. We only see the behavior or we get to hear, you know, that there may be something mentally wrong. And so you got to start asking the question, hey, OK, I, what stress or what trauma did you experience or did you endure that causes your behavior to be so out of order? 
What trauma did you experience that causes your mind right now to be out of order? Because you know they're saying now when you look you look around and you see people they're talking about they're having a mental health crisis. Well, that mental health crisis didn't just occur out of the out of thin air or by osmosis. No, the mental health crisis occurred because of the trauma. You have to ask the question, what trauma did you experience? Come on, y'all. Hear me. 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 I'm saying this and then I'm getting off of here. What trauma did you experience? When you when you when you see people who are just angry all the time, it's because they have experienced trauma. You see people who are depressed. It's because they have experienced trauma. Come on, y'all. They have experienced a severe mental attack, a severe emotional attack. They have experienced possibly some type of severe bodily injury. That's trauma. And their body has not processed it. Good God, I love you today. And so what we do as creatures of habit you know, most oftentimes we just try to move on. We try to skirt by. We try to get on around it, you know, or we'll 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 try to do the best that we can, you know, to make sure we get back to some some sense of normalcy or, or you know, like what what we're doing right now, because we're in the middle of a whole pandemic. OK, so let's talk about the events. Let me talk about the events and I'm getting out of here and talk about the events and talk about the events here. Here are some some events that bring trauma. Good morning, Ma. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Here are some events that bring trauma. Here are some events that bring trauma. Rape. Domestic violence. Natural disasters. Listen, we're in a pandemic. Severe illness or injury. These things bring trauma. The death of a loved one. Somebody dies that you really loved. That brings trauma. That's trauma. Witnessing an act of violence, that's trauma. When you witness it, like the young man who, who uh, among so many others, who literally watched George Floyd be killed there in the streets of Minneapolis. And when, 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 when he was able to do the interview on CNN with, uh, with, with Cuomo, and when he started to recall and recount the events of what was in his psyche, what was in his mind, and you could see him starting to emotionally break down. That's because of the trauma of what he witnessed. Come on, y'all. You have, again, um, the death of what it says of a family member or a lover or a friend or a teacher or a pet. Sometimes when people's pets die, people go through trauma because they've had such an emotional attachment and connection to that. Divorce is trauma. Woo! Lord, I ain't even got time. I, I got to go. I ain't even got time to talk about that. I ain't even got time to talk about that. But you got people who have been divorced and they still have not dealt with the trauma of the divorce. But they in a relationship with somebody else. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. You want to know why people bed hop and people go from relationship to relationship to relationship because they don't want to deal with the trauma that they experience. They trying to stay and keep their body in a place where it feels good. But it's never going to feel good until you deal with the trauma. Deal with your stuff. All right. War. Terrorism. These are things that bring trauma. Moving to a new location can bring trauma. Parental abandonment. Lord, I love you today. Lord, I, parental abandonment. That can bring trauma. You look at you look at some of the some of the serial killers, uh, you know, from the 70s and the 80s, even in the 60s. Look at look at and analyze what really happened to those serial killers before they became serial killers. One of the things that you will find out, one of the common threads was that there was so much trouble between the parents, between the mother and the father. And it, it induced trauma in that individual and they didn't know how to process it and they didn't have anybody to help them process it. So what did they do? They turned to Lord, I love you. They turned to what they thought would be able to help them to release what was in their body, which is killing. Come on. Murder. Okay. All right. Prison stay can induce trauma. It can bring trauma. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. 
But if you have experienced any of these events that I just said, or if you know of anybody that has experienced any of these events that I just listed, let me tell you something. You and them and we have experienced trauma. Trauma. And you have got to deal with your stuff. Deal with it. The greatest piece of this message today is get your body. What, what it says is get your body in a different atmosphere. <laughs> Lord, I love you. That's the reason why some of you, some of you need to be in the worship service. I ain't just talking about being in church. Some of you need to be in the worship service because that's the place where your body is able to relax and your mind is able to deal with what you have experienced. And you got somebody, hopefully, that's anointed to help you to be able to sort through the stuff that is going on in your life and process the mental anguish and the emotional anguish. Come on up in here, somebody. See, like God has designed it and set it up so that we would never, ever lose or be on the losing side or that we would never, ever be on the low end or negative end of this thing called life. Yes, he said there are some things that are coming to life that we are going to experience, but God has created us and has cre given us tools and weapons to be able to navigate through the trauma when we experience it. But the sad fact is we have a lot of people that are not using the tools and the weapons. And we have people who would rather ignore their trauma than to deal with their stuff. And you know what happens when you don't deal with your stuff? As Carolyn said on the other broadcast, you end up hurting somebody else. And more importantly, you continue to keep yourself in a hurting state. So you need to go to prayer. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. You need to go to Bible study. Come on now, you need to, and we're going to talk about this at the next time. You need to go see a therapist. You need to have physical activity. Why? Because the physical activity, I'm going to talk about this. The physical activity will help to release that stored up trap trauma in your body. Come on. You, and, and here's one of the things, you need to praise the Lord. <laughs> you said that right over here, Marcia. It is designed to change your disposition. Listen, you need, listen, I'm talking about physically, physically now. You need to praise the Lord physically. You need to clap your hands. You need to lift your hands. You need to dance. You need to run physically. Because that's why he gave us praise to glorify him and magnify him, but also to get that trap trauma out of your body. Come on. I know y'all, y'all, you got, you, you got people that be going to church and they just be looking around at other people. Oh, okay. That show look good. No, you need to get your hind end up and give God praise. And then that praise, when you realize it and you do it correctly, it will move you into a place called a position called worship. Then once you get into worship, you posture yourself. And you are able to hear and receive from God how to deal with your stuff. Because sometimes what he'll do, what, what God will do, what, listen now, the God that I serve, sometimes the God that I serve, what he will say is, okay, don't worry about that. I got this one. This one's on me. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this one for you. But then sometimes he'll say, you know what you need to do? You need to shut your mouth. Come on, I'm talking to you. How to deal with your trauma. He said, you need, to, you, you need to learn how to shut your mouth sometimes. One of the reasons why you experience some of the trauma that you've experienced is because you didn't shut your mouth. One of the reasons why you experienced some of the trauma that you've experienced because you didn't stop texting. One of the reasons why you experienced some of the trauma that you experienced because you didn't stop emailing. Come on, come on, somebody. I'm talking real and helping us give us practical application. To the word of God. And what did he say? And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. You transform the mind. You renew the mind. Then you will be able to renew your body and get that trauma out of you. It ain't always just, watch this, you know, it ain't always just the, the preacher or the minister evangelist or whatever pastor laying hands on you. Because after they laid their hands on you, you still have a responsibility. Lord, I love you today. I love you today. You, I'm talking to you. You still have a responsibility. Because a lot of times after you, watch this, after you leave from the worship service, you should have received wisdom and instruction to know how to navigate through whatever it is that you are experiencing in your everyday living. 
And some of that is, watch this, some of the instruction and some of the wisdom is there are some people you need to remove yourself from. You need to quit taking your physical body into that atmosphere. You need to quit allowing your physical body to become subject. Hear me what I'm saying to the conversations of some people, because when some people say stuff to you, it induces trauma in your body. And some of y'all, some of y'all don't want to wake up and don't want to realize the fact. And that's why that's why your emotions are everywhere. That's why you're constantly depressed. That's why you're constantly in anxiety. Listen, I had to stop taking my physical body into a certain place and I raised it. Listen, I'm not bringing my body in here no more because it keeps bringing up anxiety and causing and inducing anxiety in my body because of what I see in my mind and what is happening all around psychologically. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Come on, somebody say you in, you in warfare. Yep, but the word of the Lord says that he would not have us to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. And what does God do? He gives us wisdom and strategy. The word of the Lord tells us in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing. Then when you get wisdom, you got to use it. Okay. <laughs> I got to go. I love y'all. <laughs> I got to go. Ain't no need for you. To, and, and, and see, this is one of the reasons why. Let me say this and I got to go. I'm, I'm, I'm way over time. This is one of the reasons why some people don't don't come to the worship service because it didn't work for them. They didn't get the help that they needed and they feel like it didn't work for them. So that's why they don't come to church. That's why they don't want to hear nothing about nobody's evangelism. They don't want to hear nothing about nobody's preaching. They don't want to hear about nothing about nobody's praying or nobody's prophesying. Because we have not efficiently and effectively taught them how to deal with their stuff. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I know it's the truth. And I'll, I'll probably use that when I go into the leadership seminar. We have to teach people how to deal with their stuff. And we can't just say, well, I'm going to pray for you and let me lay hands on you. You need to get yourself together. Okay, teach me how to get myself together. Come on up in here, somebody. Teach me how to get myself together. And then when you while you teaching me or telling me to teach myself and get myself together, are you together? Because what the, here's the sad reality. We got a lot of pastors, a lot of bishops, a lot of apostles, a lot of evangelists, a lot of teachers and missionaries and prophets that have unresolved trauma in their own body. Because they ain't dealt with it. Deal with your stuff. Deal with your stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that you can become free and made whole. That's what Jesus wants to do for us at the end of the day. He wants to make us whole until we get to that place where we are to be with him eternally. In a place of wholeness, of wholesome experience and fulfillment with Christ. That's what it's about. And if there's anybody that's on here that's watching and you tried Jesus and it didn't work and you tried church and it didn't work, let me tell you this. Go back again. The Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you to go back again because when you go back, you're going to hear from God exactly what you need to hear. And then it becomes your responsibility to do what you hear from God. If you don't do what you hear from God, you're going to stay in the cycle. And you're going to be like a hamster on that spinning wheel. You're just going to stay right there in that cycle. But today I'm declaring and decreeing that you break that cycle and that you get off of that wheel. And that you become healed and made whole in your mind. Thank you, Jesus. In your body. I declare it and decree it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare it and decree it. And if there's anybody that's on here, because we've been talking about renewing the mind and the body, that's got a right mind right now, why don't you put up some red and blue dots and give God thanks and praise that the traumatic experience that you occurred, that you had, it didn't take you out. Because not everybody survived their trauma. Come on, not everybody comes out of their trauma. There are some people who died in their trauma. But you are still here. You have someone of a right mind that you can understand and know what today is and what today's date is. And you can have an understanding to know what your name is and where you are. That's nothing but the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. Come on and give him some glory. Give him some honor and give him what he is due. As I said to the saints of God, I don't know about you, but I owe him praise because the stuff that I experienced, I thank God that I got a right mind because at one point in time, I didn't have a right mind. My mind was everywhere. And listen, the devil was in my mind trying to tell me to take myself out of here. But today I'm still here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I dealt with my trauma. I dealt with my stuff. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
deal with your stuff so that you can live the abundant life that Jesus has come to give us. He said, I come that you might have life and life. I am my God. I love you today and life more abundantly. So I speak life over your mind. I speak life over your body. I speak life over your emotions. And I declare and decree that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord and to give him glory all the days of your life. I declare and decree that you will be made free and that you are free. Hallelujah. From the emotional stress of the trauma. The word of the Lord says that whom the son is set free is free indeed. I love you today. I pray that you've been encouraged. You've been empowered, educated, motivated, inspired, and uplifted to move towards your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created using the gifts that are within you. And I am signing off by saying, hello, 2021. I'm going up and so are you. And what's to come for you and for me when we deal with our stuff, y'all? Come on up in here. And that's a way to go into the weekend to have a wonderful weekend by dealing with your stuff. It will be better than what's been. Love on each other and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you ain't loving you, it means that you ain't dealt with your stuff. All right. I hope you're praying for me because I'm praying for you. And I will see you again real soon. Mad love.